Hello everyone and good evening to the fifth session of Science Talks organized by Science Association in collaboration with Department of Computer Science, Sir Parikram Bhav College, Pune. Today we have Professor S. Chandrasekhar, a startup expert, former head of Modern College and vice president of different global companies in working in a software field. So I welcome him on behalf of Science Association and Department of Computer Science. We also have a senior professor, Madhuvanti Teje, from Department of Computer Science. My active colleague of Science Association, Professor Chand Pramod Chandan Shive. So I welcome them all. And now I would like to request Professor Madhuvanti Teje Please introduce the Department of Computer Science in brief. Please, madam. Good evening, all of you. I am uh, Mrs. Madhuvanti Teje, working as Associate Professor in Computer Science Department. And I feel honored to introduce Department of Computer Science today. Uh, this uh, department is established in 1986. Earlier, this course was called BCS, popularly known as BCS. Uh, we have uh, UG and PG both courses uh, here. Uh, in PG courses, we have mandatory internship that is uh, aimed at giving programming and technical skills to the students. Uh, at department, we have carry out various activities and uh, it includes hands-on training of workshops and seminars. Uh, the key uh, uh, point of our departmental guidance is project guidance from experienced IT professionals. We carry out various guest lectures by experts from time to time. Uh, Pre-placement activities conducted by our department that is also very important and uh, feature of the department which makes it popular among the students. We carry out monitoring and campus placements. We also have extensive ebook bank. Uh, the placement at uh, PG level is 100%, and uh, the few prominent companies uh, which come for uh, placement for uh, PG are Harbinger, PSPL, Equation Works, Viom Labs, and uh, much more ETH, Virtuoso, Splash Kin, and so on. Uh, at the UG level also, we have uh, very good companies coming uh, for our students like TCS, Wipro, Cognizant, Infosys, Elanti, Infotech, Etios, Capgemini, and so on. So in all, uh, there are various career opportunities uh, uh, because of these courses which we conduct at SP College, uh, Computer Science Department. Students can have various career opportunities like software development, database administrator, data scientist, web developer, full stack developer, mobile app developer, or software testers, software documenters, product support engineers, as well as technical support engineers, network engineers. And also, we encourage them to become entrepreneurs. So that's the brief introduction of our department. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Uh, very nice introduction about our department of computer science. Now, I would, I would like to request Professor Ch Pramod Chandan Shive to introduce the today's eminent speaker. Please, sir. Sir, unmute yourself. Sir, unmute yourself. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Uh, this is my privilege to. Yes, this is my privilege to introduce. Uh, to, uh, at the start of his career, he was instrumental in pioneering BCS, MCS, current BSc Computer Science yeah. and MSc Computer Science. 
courses in Pune University in 1986. He has served as a head of in prior switching to industry. He is on subjects. One is electronics and other is management from Pune University. And sir has 25 years of career. He served in senior positions such as associate vice president of global companies like Veritas, Cementis, or countries like Japan and ESA as a major helped him to develop international business for his organizations. Since last has been associated with the startup, Ether Enterprise application LLP as a key member of the founding team. Prior to this, he opened as general manager, I performing CIO functions quickly. Now I request Kakadesar to proceed. Thank you, sir. Uh, I apologize for the connectivity problem at uh, Chandan Shivis sir side. So uh, sorry for that. Now I would like to request today's eminent speaker, Professor S. Chandrasekhar, to deliver his talk. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for nice introduction. And uh, it's my honor to share my experiences with the student community through Science Association SP College. Uh, I'm really honored and uh, I would like to start my session. This session would be around 40 to 45 minutes uh, where I'll be speaking and I will take questions at the end of the session. The today's topic which I have selected, you may all have read, is young generation and cyber security. And uh, the topic is very, very vast. And I tried to condense and see that there will be some useful tips and tricks for the young people who are attending this particular session. At the end of the session, they should always take away some good things and learn from this. During the introduction of computer science department, Teji Madam did explain about the roles that are there in the software industry. And I would like to add further some of the upcoming roles in the software industry through this cyber security, which is a new domain, which got added into information security domain. Let me start my presentation. Uh, can anyone confirm that uh, you are able to see my screen? Able to see the screen? Can someone confirm? Yes, sir. Thank you. I was waiting for the confirmation. Anyway, so we'll begin the presentation. As the slide uh, title says, you can see here, cybersecurity is everybody's business. And it is going to be the case, and it is going to increase incrementally every year it passes by. So I organized this particular entire uh, presentation into 12 to 13 slides, which we will be talking in brief. I will pause on the slide to see if anyone has wanted to wants to note any points from the slide so that at the end of the presentation he or she should be able to ask uh, questions if there are some 
points or some additional information is needed. So first we will see the preamble or the context, why, how, what, etc. about this particular uh, new domain that is cybersecurity, current state digital media expansion, what is the current state of digital media expansion, cyber security and cyber attacks that are there, which are the types of uh, attacks that uh, this particular field has, digital media and young generation, what is the current status of today's young generation, how they are using it and how they are coping up with this, implications of some of the some of the devices uh, of this cyber usage, then what we should do and what we should not do, that is precautionary measures to avoid us from the cyber crimes, supporting organizations, who are they, what is their function, and five, next is career opportunities, what are the different types of careers that the young generation can have in the cyber domain. And in the end, it's an interesting slide, which will have some statistics, which is mind boggling statistics, and it is changing every day. And every day, the numbers are increasing. And lastly, I would like to leave the students and uh, the attendees with some of the useful tools that they can use in their day to day life to prevent themselves from the cyber crimes. So as I mentioned uh, in my talk, that is preamble, evolution of technology and its impact. Everyone knows that these computers are here to stay, uh, which actually started in the year 19, uh, 1960s decade. The infographics, which is there on the right hand side, the title is evolution of technology and its implementation. If you expand that particular uh, infographic, you will come to know what it is. But I think from the picture, it is very clear what it could be. You can always guess because in 1960s, it was in the nascent stage. 1970s, it was in the child stage. 1990s, it was growing. 2000, 2000 year, it was in the child status or teen status. In 2000, it got adolescent, teen age, uh, teenager type. And in 2010, it got into adolescent stage. And now in 2020, definitely it is going to go to the mature stage. So technology, if you look at the landscape of technology, it has evolved right from 1960s. So it's almost six decades now that we are living in the age of computers. What is a digital world explosion? If you look at the number of devices that are there, the different types of devices that are there, which are being used in the digital world are very many, many different devices. If you look at this particular evolution, again from 60s onwards, if you look at 2010, it is mobile internet, which actually has revolutionized the entire world. And now in 2020, it is going to be internet of things. That means you name a device, it will have internet, it will have connectivity and entire world is going to get integrated together with all the possible devices out of which mobile is going to play a very, very significant role because the maximum number of users who are using this internet today are all using mobile devices. And the third infographics, which is there on the first slide on which we are going to talk is about the cyber security domain. What is cyber security domain? What is cyber security? Cyber is nothing but the term which actually gets uh, evolved from the information technology media. Whatever we talk about these computers or information technology or everything that goes into the world cyber. Why cyber security is needed? Because cyber world domain itself is expanding. And if you look at the infographics, you will find different colors. There are some six to seven different colors, and these are the subdomains. And each subdomain has a capacity of providing those many career opportunities for the young generation in this particular field. Now, going to the next slide, it is state of digital media expansion of this cyber world. The present era of computers, laptops, and Androids, and internet, etc., is making the human its slaves. You may all agree with me, because today morning, every day morning, whenever we get up, instead of newspapers, many of us are reaching to their mobile to look at what are the messages that have come in their WhatsApp. The internet has become essential part of the life, almost 80% of day-to-day -day activities. Wherever you go, whichever area you go, whichever function or whichever domain you go, you need 
that particular digital media and internet. If you look at uh, the number of users in India, there are 500 plus million internet users in India. And most of them, mainly they are all smartphone users. Highest data consumption of 11 GB per month in the world is made by our Indians. Uh, please remember in this entire uh, presentation is focused towards majority of facts from India only so that uh, it will appeal to all of us. 97% users access internet on their mobile phones, mobile devices, which I mentioned earlier also. And India's smartphone shipments grew 9% year on year to reach 53 million in Q3 of 2020. All these figures are recent. And if you look at the graphics at the right hand side, you will find the internet users in India, how they are growing year on year, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, etc. Now, due to last year's pandemic, thanks to it, the entire industry was talking about uh, digital transformation, making everything automated, making everything computerized, increase the presence of computers in their field, in their organization, in their domain, etc. But this particular pandemic, what it has done is it has actually accelerated the entire digital transformation. Wherever, whichever organizations had a plan of three to four years, for making this entire their organization automated or digital transformation, it had pushed actually to make them overnight. I can tell you one of the experiences, most of the companies, including my company where I was working, we never had a work from home policy and we had around 1000 people. And uh, it, work from home was unheard in our company because we were believing that people should come to office, they should work, they should sit at the desk and work face to face. But this pandemic forced us to make our teams work from home. And believe me, within a week's time, we were able to make our entire workforce working from home, not only working from home, but work very, very effectively. Why it was possible, how it was possible? It was possible because of digital media and the tools available today to make it happen. It is the case of my organization, but it is the case of almost every organization. And you will see that since last year, everybody is talking about the digitalization, making online. Even today, our schools right from first standard to 10th standard are also online this year. And many students who are at the age of five, six, seven are attending their regular classes online using computers, laptops, and mobile phones. So this is the power of that digital media which actually has forced the entire human being to use them more attractive that's why i'm calling it that it is making humans slaves right the new normal has got the emphasis on online transactions almost every business area you just name the uh, domain name the area you will find some digital media will presence will be there some automation will be there including our payments in fact most of the people today are using online banking rather than visiting their bank in person. Entire banking transactions, they are trying to make uh, digital, online. In fact, there are some wallets, pocket, everything, majority of tools are making us to do or use online tools. If you look at the numbers, Digital India recorded a huge increase of 63.5% in cybercrime crisis. Why cybercrime crisis are increasing? Because the use of digital media is increased. Whenever money enters into any area or any business, definitely there will be people with malefied in intentions will be entering to take advantage of it. As the presence of digital media is increasing, cybercrime is also increasing. These two go in parallel if the digital media increases definitely cyber crime rate is going to increase and that's what is exactly happening it has happened and we also envisaged if you look at the ncrb which is national crime record bureau it has registered 44000 cases of cyber crimes in 2019 as compared to 27000 in 2018 that means nearly 60% rise in the number of cases that are there, which are related to cyber attacks, right? Cyber attacks means anything, any crime which is related to cyber is cyber crime. To combat the cyber crime, we need to focus more 
on cyber security and that is why cyber security becomes very very important for us because every day cyber crimes are going to increase people who are doing these kind of uh, actions are going to increase mainly these people are called as hackers they used to call earlier hackers but today's hackers are very very sophisticated hackers they are more intelligent they have tools they have sophisticated tools they also have business plans how to attack how to go etc so therefore we should be very very sorry we should be very very careful in meeting uh, using this particular digital media if you look at the graph that is there on this slide it is there is a sharp increase in cyber crimes in india during the last decade the graph is going upward fortunately it is not straight but it is going upwards definitely if you plot for another next 5 years it's going to go up only going to the next slide cyber attack and cyber security what is a cyber attack it is an assault launched by cyber criminals using one or more computers against a single or multiple computers or networks a cyber attack can maliciously disable computers steal data or use a breach computer as a launch point okay what are the different types of cyber attacks if you look at the different types of attacks there are malware attacks there is a sql injection there is a phishing man in the middle attack denial of services that is ddos if you look at uh, these attacks what are these attacks we only know majority of us know only about viruses what is virus virus is a self replicating program which is introduced by these hackers where your computer will start malfunctioning now earlier viruses were only limited to computers now these viruses are spread over all the digital devices including mobile phones even iot devices also trojans these are different types of uh, this one of the types of malware which is actually a hidden program spyware secret user data capture spyware programs do this data capture very secretly ransomware encrypt files and demands money this is a very very dangerous uh, type of attack where people who use these computers in a malified way and they try to encrypt the user files and they demand money i can tell you many examples which are known to me which actually happened in fact one of my entrepreneur friend got a ransomware attack his entire data of last 3 years accounts was encrypted and the person demanded 50000 rupees to get those uh, that data decrypted decrypted so these attacks can happen to anyone and these are increasing day by day i'm not trying to scare all of you by giving these uh, examples but definitely there is a way to deal with these cyber criminals and cyber attacks how to do we will see in upcoming slides then there is a type called adware which is actually advertising softwares which spreads malware botnet malware infected networks now i am not going to go into the details of uh, all the functionalities i am assuming that most of this particular generation who is attending today is computer literate at least people know what computer is definitely they all know mobile phones because everybody is using mobile from right from their school days so i am not going to go into the basic details of these but whenever you uh, find something which is not in uh, understood please reserve that for the questions at the end now phishing is another type of attack which actually is done through emails what happens is you will get an email from as if it is from your known person or known source but that particular mail is not the true one and that mail if you open definitely the data or your credentials can get stolen and it can be used in a different way man in the middle attack intercepts communication very simple example of this type of attack is that for example i am using a wifi and my neighbor is also using a wifi what happens is sometimes my neighbor's wifi i know his password so i just intercept i just use his wifi rather than my wifi 
and I intercept the communication between him and his device, and I can try to steal the data from his Wi-Fi. That is called as man in the middle attack. The denial of service attack, that is DDoS. That means what happens is these hackers or people who have these bad intentions will overload the server with the requests that they keep on sending. For example, if the server is able to, is having a capacity of say, managing or handling 1000 requests, they send 2000 requests, 10,000 requests. So what happens in this case? In this case, that server will stop functioning. That is called as DDoS attack. Majority of international organizations have been a victim of this particular DDoS. There is some list I've tried to provide you at the end of the presentation where you can see the amount of uh, loss that has happened due to this uh, attacks, which are different types of attacks. That is malware attacks, SQL injection, phishing, man in the middle, denial of service. So in order to combat all these types of attacks, cybersecurity becomes very, very important, which is a practice of protecting systems, networks, and programs from digital attacks. These cyber attacks are usually aimed at accessing, changing, or destroying sensitive information, extorting money from users, or interrupting normal business processes. That means this particular cybersecurity becomes very, very important for all of us because definitely there is a chance that majority of us, if we do not use our smartphones in a smart way or use this digital media cautiously with precautions, we will definitely, we can definitely be duped or get caught into the loss kind of scenario. Now, coming back to the fact that what is digital media and what is young generation. Now, if you look at, uh, as I mentioned earlier, today's teens, which are part of Gen Z, who are young people who were born and raised in the new technology era, cannot envisage an offline world without internet. Everybody wants internet. Everybody wants uh, social media. From an early age, they have juggled with computers, tablets, smartphones, and accessories that they use for daily lives. There are some numbers which I have tried to compile and put for your uh, information. A large percentage, that is 73% of teens today, own a smartphone. Now, you can see your friends, colleagues, brothers, sisters in this age group and see whether whatever is mentioned here is true or not. Just don't go by the actual numbers. It's just a trend. 73% may not be exactly 73%, but definitely a large percentage of teens are using smartphone these days. 92% of youth population access internet daily. Ask a question yourself, yes or no. If the answer is no, then you are in that 8%, which is a, low, which is a minority today. 90% of Indian teenagers follow Instagram or Facebook. This also is true because all these numbers have been taken from an authentic survey, which is published in the Indian journals. 72% Indian young population follows WhatsApp. 65% of Indian young population follow Google apps. 70% of children are online at the age of 13 and below. Nearly 50% of youth uses average five hours on internet. Now, these five hours could be five and a half hours, six hours, or eight hours. It's an average of five hours that 50% of youth are using internet today. 34% teens report that they are being bullied. Now, this is the consequence which is happening due to the over usage of internet and especially using internet without proper care. Going to the next slide, which actually talks about what could be the implications of this cyber usage or over usage. Lack of proper knowledge of cyber laws and casual approach of many people, including young, uh, 
including the people who are in their 40s, 50s, everybody has a majority of them, I would say, has casual approach towards using their digital media, especially smartphone. And this will lead few consequences mentioned below. Your account getting hacked. What is mean by account getting hacked? That means your account, whichever account, maybe a Facebook account or an email account, getting hacked means some unauthorized user has stolen your username and password due to which you are unable to log into your account and all your previous data goes for a toss. Youngsters accessing social media accounts with a fake age. This is a problem in India, which we have we are observing. I'm not sure whether you people have observed or not, but there are many cases. In fact, our parents only encourage sometimes to their children and give them those accounts. That is a Google account or an Instagram account or an WhatsApp before the specified age by that particular application. Due to this uh, wrong usage, there could be some items which uh, something which may happen where children without their knowledge may post any obscene content or sexual content or derogative content on the internet without knowing its consequences there are very very severe consequences of posting these kind of uh, items news items on the internet there are very famous cases which you may have read in the newspaper for which there are arrests which have happened uh, there is one very famous case in 2015 uh, there were two ladies who were booked against posting a very violent post against mr balasaheb thakre getting cyber bullied get threatening messages this is common for teens or youngsters who are using their internet they get some threatening messages from the unknown people and they are shy of telling this to their parents majority of the times and that's where they get cyber bullied the term is called a cyber bullied that means they get threatening messages consumption of violent games leading to psychological disorders this you may have seen at least i have observed few teens or few children who are, who get them isolated they do not talk much they are lonely they are alone they spend most of their time in front of mobile or a computer or a game ps2 or v game etc but and most of the games today which are popular are all violent games the next one which is little dangerous that is sexting sending sexually explicit messages photos or videos via cell phone people think it is safe to do that but it's very very unsafe remember one thing it which is very very important anything that you post once on internet whether it's a photograph or it's a message once it is posted it is gone you will not be able to delete even if you are deleting it already the message is reached to the server of that particular application and believe me all these big companies in the world which are there nobody deletes any data because data is their money data is their power i'll give you one example which are the biggest uh, and famous companies in the world today google whatsapp facebook right now these three companies do they have any product for sale i don't think so majority of their products are free for usage now these companies which have this philosophy of giving free actually the consumer is the product for them what they are doing is they are trying to store each and every data which is coming or which is being used in their applications for their consumption and they keep doing data mining and analyze that data and come back to the users with some other benefits for themselves now i'll give you one example at the end of this lecture 
many of you, if you don't know, just go to google.com slash dashboard. Okay. Everybody must, must have used Google these days. Go to google.com and do a slash dashboard. You will find that each and every action that you have done on that particular device has been saved by Google. And it will tell you what you have done in 2018, 2019, 2015, where were you, what were you doing, which transaction you did, what kind of photographs you took, which place to which place you traveled, what was the mode of your travel. All these details will be seen by you in your report, even today. This is very, very shocking because all these companies will save this every minute, every second data into their server and try to use against the users or consumers. So again, I'm repeating, please be careful while uploading any photogram, either on Instagram or Facebook or message, see its consequences, what will happen? Because once the data is gone, it's gone from your hands. In Marathi, when we say that it's like that, that photograph, that particular information is out of your hands. It's gone forever and it's you have no control on it. Who will use it? How they will use it? You have no control. And you will be surprised one day that something will come out of it. Majority of criminal cases solved by these cyber cells of so-called all the state uh, all the states in India are using these particular tools. There is a different branch in cyber security, cyber world named forensic branch who actually dig out these particular, these informations and try to solve the cyber crimes. Now, last two points are about the health problems, which uh, many of the younger generation would be feeling. There will be back problem or neck problem at the age of 15, 16. They are on the rise due to improper posture, including your mobile phone. The way you look at your mobile phone is not a right posture. You can go and search on Google and see the correct posture and try to use that your phone in a correct posture. That will help you. Then last one is about the lack of time and emotional exertion. Normally what happens when you are in front of screen for a longer time, you actually get exhausted and you don't feel energetic. And there is no time for you to meet in person to your, with your friends or with your family. And this particular ex experience has been uh, shared by many employees in the last seven, eight months. Due to this pandemic, as I mentioned, most of the organizations have started work from home culture where people are working from home. Initially, in the first uh, few months, people were very happy, including maybe students also very happy because there is no college, there is no school. You all can sit at home, you can sleep, you can watch, and you can actually look at or, or attend your classes online, looking at the screen without uh, virtually. So what happens is the amount of time spent in front of screen by all the people is increased tremendously. And now after seven, eight months, employees are asking the organizations to stop or asking the organizations when they can come and work from office. Work from home is really taxing them because organizations are taking them at rampant, stating that, oh, person is available 24 by 7. The working hours are increased. For companies, it may be good because the productivity is increased, but still it's not good for all the employees. And this is what I'm saying is lack of time for personal interaction and emotional exertion. So these are some of the implications that have uh, that I could observe uh, because of the use of this uh, over cyber usage, cyber media usage. Now, this is the most uh, important slide, I would say, even though the do's and don'ts, which I have mentioned here are very, very straightforward. Majority of us do not follow. And that is why we fall prey to these cyber crimes and the number of cyber crimes that are increasing day by day will continue. First thing, what are these do's? Emphasize cyber security. What do you mean by cyber security? Cyber security means use all the devices as they are device, uh, they are meant or produced to use. That means 
basically i would say i would make one comment which many of you may not like also smartphone users are smart not smart users because we hardly use features of smartphone very very few few people use majority of smartphone features because all the 100% uh, smartphone features nobody can use it because there are many so what do you mean by emphasize cyber security just follow the instructions given by the manufacturer how to use that particular device bring cyber hygiene or teach and learn netiquette what is netiquette netiquette is nothing but netizens etiquette that means whatever you post whatever you present you present yourself in social media either on facebook or whatsapp or email there are certain etiquettes which need to be followed that means you need to be respectful talk politely do not criticize then also give chance to others these are some of the basic etiquettes do not write long emails be specific all the simple techniques of netizens are called as netiquettes netiquettes so you always need to follow the cyber hygiene make cyber education a must in the curriculum this is what i think uh, every corner of the society is talking about and i think the new education policy which is coming in uh, 2022 will definitely take cognizance of this and have more emphasis on the cyber education there are some initiatives which are happening in uh, pockets where people are trying to educate or give cyber awareness to schools or school children then colleges and also the curriculum now i, I heard that uh, there are universities which are actually having a three year degree course in cyber education and also a post graduate course but i think cyber education is a must in curriculum if not i think we all should start or learn cyber education by using our google baba teach secure software framework so for all the teachers there's a request that teach secure software framework what is secure software framework see whenever we application programmers write applications those applications get deployed what these cyber criminals or people who have bad intentions will try and find the loophole or vulnerability in the software and they pick that vulnerability and they insert their malicious code through that vulnerability so if your framework is weak application vulnerabilities are more definitely that particular application is hackable application it will get hacked and therefore learning a secure so software framework is very very important this is very well known next one which is use strong password in spite of this telling everybody every day every nook and corner people do not follow even today many people have password as their name or password as 123 at the rate some very simple passwords which can be broken within seconds by hackers so what are these strong password that means it should have minimum eight characters with combination of all types of number alphabet special and symbols this is a must by sincere request to all of you is please use strong passwords for any application that you use you never know when you will get hooked to a cyber a hacker or a cyber criminal change passwords periodically now people will come up saying that oh there are hundreds of passwords which are there for each and every applications in different uh, domain how do i remember why should i uh, use different passwords for different applications why not only one password at all the places believe me there are cyber criminals which are doing their business in a very very planned way once they catch one password they will be able to hack you in in, in your entire profile there are cases very interesting cases on youtube which actually will explain or tell you how these criminals work and how they come and hack into your entire profile so change passwords periodically once again i repeat use strong passwords in each and every applications avoid using secure wifi networks bluetooth in public places 
do not use unsecure Wi-Fi. Keep updating your applications. Even if you go and look your mobile, most of your applications may not be having the latest version. 83% of Android users do not update their applications, which is a very, very alarming situation. So better go back and check your mobile applications. Definitely everyone will have at least 50 to 60 applications installed on their mobile. That means you are giving 50 to 60 different points of vulnerability to the hacker. He may come. When he will come, we don't know. When it comes, it's all gone. Back up data regularly. I think this is also a no-brainer. You should have a backup of your data, which is important data. Do not try and uh, compile all garbage data. All classified data, you should be able to back up very regularly. Keep looking for no password options. If you feel that remembering and generating these strong password is going to be a difficult task for you or it's boring, then you search for options wherever you can get your thumbnail or retina scan, etc., which are actually biometric and you can actually uh, use them instead of those passwords. Be careful when downloading applications. In this era of digital media, there are multiple applications. You just name a word, you will find an application related to that on uh, your uh, mobile. So be careful when you are downloading applications. Those applications may contain a spyware, may contain a adware, or may contain a malicious software. We don't know. So be careful. And the last one, which is actually used by people who really follow 100% cyber hygiene, that is get your camera webcam covered on your computer. Because through webcam, it is possible to, to enter into your system using some tools which are there in the market. So it's better that you don't expose yourself, not only through email or uh, passwords or loose passwords, etc., but also through webcam. Any device which is attached to computer should be used very, very preciously and very, very distinctly. Do not do. What are these don'ts? Do not overexpress on social media. That's what I said earlier. Because whatever you express on social media, it's gone. You will not be able to take it back. It's forever there. Even if you delete from your WhatsApp, your group, etc., but that particular message is there in the server of that particular application. So do not overexpress. Do not share personal information on gaming sites. This is another weak point where hackers or cyber criminals will enter into. Do not use free software as far as possible. Why I said as far as possible? Because Google, everybody uses and we need to use Google. Otherwise, we'll, our life will be miserable. right? So do not open any unknown email attachment. This is another uh, very, very important uh, don'ts. Because mail attachments actually will lead to a link, and that link will be a malicious link, and which could lead to an entry to a malware. Do not reveal your credit card, OTP, CVV information on phone. In spite of this telling by each and every financial institution which is uh, delivering you, uh, which is providing you all these facilities, people are getting duped to this. Just for uh, your information, uh, there is very interesting uh, web series called Jamtara. Many of you have may have watched it, which actually tells about, it's a true story. One of the states in India, actually, those kids between 13 to 20 are using this particular loophole and earning money illegally, which is a true story. Just go and watch Jamtara, which is on Netflix, and see how they are doing it. It's a crime. You should not do it. In fact, they get caught in all. That's a different thing. But actually, they are doing it. And people are falling prey to it in spite of several instructions every time given by the bank, by the known people that do not share your OTP, CVV, etc. Do not accept unknown friend requests on social media. Another important thing. Otherwise, you will be falling prey to cyberbully. Do not share passwords with friends. Many times we do it, 
we do it unintentionally but sometimes be careful when you do it please change the password immediately do not save usernames and passwords on shared computers always log out when you are finished using someone else's device especially people who are using cyber cafes different computers different devices every day to access net and their bank these things please log out from the application after you finish your transaction but as far as possible avoid using cyber cafes for all these important transactions do not get panic if you are a victim of cyber stalking or cyber bullying normally what happens is people get panic if they get threatened by somebody or anything i'll give you one example <coughs> it's very easy to say but i'm, I'm not sure whether you people have heard called a term called deep web or a dark web now this deep web or dark web is a part of uh, internet which is available today for all the criminals in the world and deep the intensity of deep web is so high that whatever google shows you it is actually only a 4% of information what we see the rest of the information is available on dark web or dark net where majority of criminals are doing their business mainly armed dealers drug dealers use this in fact in usa the parallel economy is run by this deep web or dark web whatever we hear in the media about this phishing so many that so many of uh, data breaches or uh, millions of records being exposed personal information getting leaked all these types of uh, crimes which we hear where does all this go all these this particular data is available for sale on deep web or dark web people there purchase this particular information and try and do wrong things as cyber times for example uh, you get many phone calls you you're not shared your phone number to anybody or you're not shared your email but still your email box or your phone will get unknown calls from unknown numbers in spite of it being dnd it will also get some uh, mails which are junk mails which are coming from unknown sources where do they get all these information your email address or your phone phone number etc it is from all these databases there are people who are doing this malicious activities of in the database so all this are the hazards of this cyber use cyber usage and over usage of cyber usage cyber world so again i will request all of you to remember carefully what are these do and what are these don'ts going to the next uh, slide which is uh, very informative now we keep hearing about the government uh, authorities and how they function but in this case in case of cyber security or cyber domain our government of india has done a wonderful job in fact majority of information what you require any support you require you will get it from government of india ministry of electronics and information technology website is a very good website which has got latest information and you can go and always fetch for the information government of india has set up cyber cells in each each state each district for specially handling these cyber crimes then there are two organizations one is the certain organization and another is bsci certain is the indian computer emergency response team government of india based or, uh, organization it is a nodal agency for responding to computer security incidents as and when they occur for example if you find any malicious post on the social media certain has rights to just bring down that particular site or bring down that particular application and they work 24 by 7 they always send forecasts and alerts of cyber incidents whatever incidents have happened in the past certain is able to send majority of the times the alerts before that particular crime is happening emergency measures for handling cyber security incidents so they always their team is ready to help the cyber cells or districts or say for police to 
combat cyber crime dsci is another organization which is data security council of india which actually is a body which is responsible for data protection which is set up by nascom nascom is another organization which actually is helping all the software uh, organizations in india committed in making cyber space safe secure and trusted by establishing best practices standards initiatives in cyber security and privacy so these are four or five different uh, organizations where you can seek help if somebody is a victim of cyber bullying or cyber stalking he or she should not hesitate to talk to his or her parents they can always go to nearest police station ask for cyber uh, cell help there and uh, get their query solved or get their case registered there so that uh, they can help and take it forward and nab the criminal and majority of times i would say that there are good success stories and good case studies available on youtube narrated by these police officers who are working as cyber criminal experts or cyber forensic experts who is forensic expert forensic expert is nothing but person who actually evaluates all these post mortem of information technology data is called a cyber forensic they help general public to actually solve all these cases coming back to the important slide for all of you which is opportunities now we talked about uh, cyber crimes types of attacks what exactly is cyber world how big is it how it is increasing what are the different types of challenges that it has got definitely one of the challenges as far as our opportunities are concerned is around 3.5 million unfulfilled cyber security positions will be open in 2021 every organization every department every domain needs to have a cyber security expert these days because of increase in digital media presence digital applications etc so we must have a mechanism to protect our own interests therefore the number of jobs in this particular field are increasing 82% of employers report is talking about there is a short, shortage of cyber security skills to tell you a fact in fact in india even companies which are boosting that they are into the cyber field they are also wanting for staff more and more it's like dil mange more the number of people they have are not available and they are getting exhausted because of the number of attacks and the number of uh, data churn that is happening in this uh, cyber world is huge therefore there is always a shortage 61% of companies are thinking that their cyber security staff is not qualified enough this could be a fact and i would say that this is a fact because everybody in this field is learning every day because learning never stops here the moment you find a solution uh, for a cyber crime the cyber criminal finds a new way a new vulnerability and tries to attack in a new way so it's a cat and mouse chase every day so therefore however good you are and however how many skill however however many skills you try to adapt every day there is something new to learn and therefore the claim that these company heads are telling that cyber security staff is not qualified may not be 100% true but definitely there is a scope for improvement and there is always a scope for improvement to learn more and more so 60% of cyber security professionals aren't satisfied with their current job because they feel it's a mundane job after one or two similar types of attacks so therefore they want challenges every day so every cyber security person wants to get experience in almost all the fields suppose i am an expert in identifying phishing but i don't know how the how to handle ddos so i want to handle ddos also if i am if i learn ddos then i may go for phishing then i may go for sql injection type of this thing so i may have to learn new skill new type so every cyber security professional it's like learning a new tool and he wants to learn because he wants to become expert because he wants to take on take head on and most 
most of these people are youngsters in the age of 21 to 25 and most of them you will find that they will boost themselves as ethical hacker now what is that ethical hacker if you find the slide below there is a mention about the roles in the cyber industry so before going to that i think uh, the next uh, paragraph is very straightforward what is cyber domain education there are numerous short term and long term courses available these days online courses is a big boost and uh, you have a uh, ample of material which is there available on youtube and internet most of it is free but i would advise that you do some preliminary courses free and uh, then you learn a course which will teach you the fundamentals in the right way there is a there are universities which actually do a degree in information technology with uh, 3 to 4 years of experience in security there is a cyber security bachelor's of degree also in north india there are th three four universities where we had type through our previous organization then there is a mtech in cyber security which is actually available in pune university also uh, this particular course is two years course and majority of these courses in cyber domain are practical oriented courses if i want to tell you uh, you should not be a excellent coder even if you don't know coding even if you are not wanting to do development you can become a cyber expert with little bit of coding and majority of practical work because cyber uh, domain doesn't require full stack developer or a full time coding person it requires a person who is inquisitive who is analytical in mind and who can do a work i mean detective kind of work so these are some of the standard uh, courses available to for yourself to get into cyber domain and get a job in cyber security where there are 3.5 million jobs are waiting for you now going to the next is what are different types of roles which you can called as so these are all titles which are there and as i mentioned earlier everyone wants to be a ethical hacker what is ethical hacker ethical hacker is nothing but the person who actually protects their his his or her own organization by doing a penetrating penetrative testing that there is no loophole or no vulnerability in their own application so that other outside person cannot come and attack them so they are called as ethical hackers or penetration testers so everybody wants to do hacking or ethical hacker if you ask any teen or a child what do you want to become in cyber security domain he will say that i want to become a ethical hacker because somewhere they have heard this term and they they are proud to call themselves as ethical hacker but it's not a easy job it's a tough job and uh, there are imminent ethical hackers and one of them i used to work with him in year 2003 in my one of uh, earlier organization he is today uh, in the advisory committee of prime minister's board which is set up for uh, cyber security so there are some roles which is security specialist incident responder security administrator security manager all these roles are self explanatory or you can go on internet and read about them the job description what exactly it is but in my earlier half an hour to 45 minutes talk i have explained or touched upon each and every term which is there uh in the security and in the end what i want to urge everyone is young people like you should do a national cyber service see what is happening is today the scope of internet is increasing and the number of attacks that are increasing in india india is the third largest country which is being attacked or which is being targeted because of the volume and the kind of potential that the criminals are looking in india so <laughs> every one of us or every young mind should do a national cyber service is my request to you think at it think about it do a serious thought take guidance of your teachers and parents and see how you can become a good cyber citizen helping cyber security to combat cyber criminals this was the main part of the presentation which i wanted to share even though this particular uh, topic is a very huge topic it was very difficult for me to condense it in 
9 to 10 slides touching each and every aspect of this cyber world. But I've tried to do my best in the last uh, six, seven days. The day we decided to talk about it, I was uh, I'm thankful to Professor Bosley who suggested me to talk about something in cybersecurity. So I picked up this topic and uh, attached this uh, young uh, generation to it and tried to see and get some data compiled, which could be helpful to all of you. The next slide is a uh, very interesting slide, is just for a read, where there are only numbers, which will tell you the how deep this particular cyber crime or cyber world is going to. In India, every day, 4 lakh malware attacks are found. I and mean, 4 lakh malwares are found. And 3675 cyber attacks are witnessed. Indian organizations faced 14.6 14 crore of malware attacks in 2019. Right? So 2019 was the year when actually the number of attacks increased because of surge in the use of digital uh, media due to this pandemic. The average cost of ransomware attack on a company is around 8 crore rupees. Now, this figure sound, may sound you a little illogical, but it is true. If you look at the amount, time spent, and the business loss, and the manpower invested to combat that particular attack, will definitely go in crores. And 8 crores is an average based on the some statistics which is derived from, by that survey agency. Cyber crimes in India caused losses of 1.25 lakh crore in 2019. These are all recent figures which I tried to compile so that you get an idea and see how much big impact this particular cyber criminals are having on our society. And as I said earlier, India ranks third in the list of ransomware detections because of the usage of uh, internet connectivity. USA being the first because the now internet usage is more in USA, UK being the second. So USA is just 18.2% of uh, ransomware attacks happen there. Hackers attack every 39 seconds on an average 2,244 times a day. So these are all figures, even if they're literal, if you, if you don't take literal meaning, definitely the number is alarming and this number is going to go increase. If we talk about this topic in say next six months, definitely these figures will be definitely 1.2 times or even two times, depending on how it shapes up. These are some of the numbers, cases registered in India. If you look at the Indian government's work, I think they are doing pretty well or pretty good because they are able to scrub a lot of cyber crimes in the bud itself. Among the union territories, Delhi is alone accounting 78%. Rest of this, I think Maharashtra is number three. Karnataka is having highest uh, cyber crime cases registered, 12,000. Then Uttar Pradesh is 11,000. And then those two states, Telangana and Assam. I try to compile this just for information. And the next one is the interesting slide where uh, I have combined a uh, few of the cyber attacks and uh, try to compile in a sheet where you can get the impact of it and how serious it could be. And out of which you will see there are number five, number six, and number seven, which are number eight. These are all India-based attacks. Cosmos Bank is known to us. People, uh, you may have read in the newspapers in 2018, 94 crore rupees were siphoned out to Cosmos Bank. Uh, Fortunately, I was uh, able to get some inside story to this. There were companies, there was uh, information given to the bank by our own cyber cell department of Maharashtra, but they ignored somehow or that information did not reach in time. Something happened and that hack happened. That means our government agencies are very, very alert in case of cyber attacks and uh, we could not find conclusively who was the attacker, but the suspicion is that these particular attackers or this particular hackers gang was from North Korea. Then Canara Bank attack is there, then Aadhaar card attack, if you can see, number seven, 
Indian healthcare website, data breach of 68 lakh records stolen. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier. When I give these numbers, where will these records go and what exactly people do with this data? It's just a name, number and phone number or some personal information. In India, unfortunately, we do not value this. But in uh, foreign countries, personal information is the most important information. They normally do not reveal it so easily. And they can sell it. And based on that particular information, people can breach into your profiles and accounts. One very interesting uh, news that I read yesterday. Now, again, I'll be cautious because on the way, whatever comes on the social media through WhatsApp or through social media may not be true in the first instance, but uh, it's worth mentioning here. There's a very senior general, journalist uh, called Nidhi Rajdan from NDTV who actually has given her uh, experience, shared her experience, how she got duped due to a phishing attack. Now, what is that phishing attack? So in the year uh, 2020, around January to February, she got a mail from Oxford or Harvard University, some foreign university. And uh, it, was for, it was a job offer. It was a professor job offer to her which actually she said that what's the harm in trying and she went ahead and she started discussing with them whatever dialogue happened between her and that particular university was she felt that it was so genuine that they conducted her interview they conducted her reference checks they conducted her uh, profiling and they also sent her the offer letter with the signatures of the authorized people of that particular university from HR department. And it was so genuine, she felt so genuine that she left her job in the month of June and started uh, planning to go in the month of November. And then she started getting doubt because there was no communication from their end. And after one or two months, she tried to contact them through email there was no response then she called up and said to she called up directly the hr department and to her surprise they said that there was no record of her interviews her offer letter or anything and they also mentioned that these things are happening in their university and the signatures of those senior people were forged original of only original look like uh, offer letters were prepared, sent, and personal information was sought from Nidhi Rajdan. Fortunately, she has not mentioned was she really a victim of it or not because her personal information is with those hackers who ever fished her and they may use it against her bank account or they may have siphoned out some money. We don't know that. It's not been declared. But person who is in the news media, well-literate person, felt everything as if it is true. There are another case is that there are some websites or videos on YouTube which are uh, done by eminent people here. They will tell you that whatever videos we may receive on WhatsApp or uh, these news media circulates, they are all deep fake videos. And there are softwares which can find out this. For example, there is a video which was circulating with the uh, President, former President Obama's voice, he's talking about John, President uh, Trump, some comments, which he never did. But that video looks so genuine that we never feel that it's a false video or it's a deep fake video. So these days, cyber criminals have gone to this stage that they can actually make you feel that as if it is true. Last month, I'll give you my personal example. I got an email in my Yahoo email box from State Bank to authorize some information, personal information. I was suspicious. Just for curiosity, I clicked that particular link and went to that website. And to my surprise, that State Bank website and my original State Bank website both looked alike, same. But since I was more cautious. I saw the details in URL and I found there was some malicious code in that URL which was diverting me to separate subdomain and sub uh, separate uh, website. 
and I found out that the mail which I had received had a fake website, but the entire screen developed by that fake website and this original website are same. You can definitely, or you, you will bound to in, enter information if you are not careful. Therefore, my request once again is, whenever you click these URLs or some fishy data which comes to you through your social media, please be careful. Read the URL completely and do your transaction. I will not go into the numbers details because these numbers are just indicators of the amount of uh, data that has been forged. You will find all famous companies like Facebook, Yahoo, Uber, Ramit, all are prey of some or the other attacks. Whether it's a data breach attack, it's a Trojan attack or ATM attack, some of the other attacks and have lost their money, lost their credibility, etc. So you will find n number of stories in the newspaper. So I would uh, newspaper or even in the media. Keep reading it. Be careful and have a safe journey. Before leaving last slide, I want to leave you with some takeaways from this particular presentation or a talk. You can use these applications. Truecaller, I think many of you must be using. It's a good uh, application which will actually tell you, it will uh, block your spam calls or it will intimate who the caller is. Acuna is application which actually keeps uh, watch on your, uh, it's anti-hack software. Any application or your email gets hacked, Acuna will tell you what it is. Any suspicious URL, if you find, you can always test that particular URL in the two sites, which is virustotal.com or urlscan.io. These two websites will keep scanning all the time and uh, they will tell you whether the URL is a suspicious URL or it's a safe URL. So this is a URL checking mechanism which is there in these two uh, softwares. And Hakuna is anti hack software and Truecaller, you know, it has to be there on your mobile. If not, please go and install and uh, do it. And in the end, I would just say thank you very much for giving me this honor to share my thoughts and experience with you all. And stay safe in this cyberspace and continue your cyber journey. All right. Before uh, ending and open it to question and answers, I just want to mention one more uh, watch that you all must see is the social dynamo documentary on Netflix. It is a 94 minute uh, documentary where all these tech giants that is Yahoo, Facebook or WhatsApp or Google, some of their very senior people have talked about their feet, what they did for the mankind by developing these applications, how they helped this mankind to improve their life in the beginning. And in the end, they have also said that these improvements are these real improvements because we have given so many curses to mankind and they are actually uh, not very happy with what they did and they are trying to apologize to society saying that what we did may not be 100% right so please be careful because the hazards of overuses of cyber they understood very well and they try to tell you what they feel. And now they have opened a spiritual group and they're trying to console and they're trying to increase their. So I will again urge all of you to watch that particular documentary on Netflix, which is Social Dynama, and uh, listen to the views of those people. Thank you. I will stop here and wait for questions. I'm sorry if I was. Uh, a little fast because I'm not sure how much time is elapsed. It must be more than one hour, I believe. Thank you. Sir, back to you. Yeah, yes. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, very informative and useful talk for young generations. 
as well as for the all people those are using the smartphones internet and the different data devices so i am thankful to you for this uh, talk now i would like to request sharak shalakha ma'am and the teji ma'am please ask the questions related with the talk those you have please okay shalakha first i'll ask a uh, few questions then you can uh, ask the questions which are with you uh, one important question i want to ask is uh, all uh, this uh, because of this pandemic we are all forced to do net banking and mobile banking so uh, can you give us some guidelines for the people who are doing net banking and what care we should take while doing online banking through mobile okay good question i think i covered the uh, majority of these things in uh, do's and don'ts a uh, very important thing on uh, banking applications or financial applications that we do online download the authorized application from the bank if possible get it verified from the bank person and use legitimate passwords password should be strong and keep password and do not use those applications in front of everybody use them when you are alone or do not show your mobile screen to them because it is and also your mobile should also be having some password or some keyword it should not be open just a swipe should not make your mobile open because what normally all these banking applications do is once you log in they are logged in always and sometimes it just gets open with one password only so always use two factor authentication so what is two factor authentication it's a multi factor authentication so password is once and fingerprint may be second so use two factor authentication all the time majority okay. of banks are there for otp also so use those otps very judiciously Okay, and follow sir. bank instructions possibly so this is main thing which i would say is keep your passwords very very strong keep it uh, change change it periodically and uh, keep uh, use two factor authentication as far as possible for almost all the applications okay thank you sir uh, i think uh, the similar uh, care we should take uh, while using the online payment application modes like uh, upis like google pay and bhim application and all other things uh, absolutely okay thank you sir uh, can hack a hacker install any ha app on my mobile he can <laughs> and uh, the way that he does there are some tricks and tools available so there is a there are some youtube videos available you can go and there are multiple tricks which are available with uh, mobile phones but provided that mobile needs to be given to him at least once okay. so indirectly if he wants to give then you should not open your applications anyway he can enter into your mobile through any application vulnerability that you have On. so keep your mobile secure whatever is there keep it with secure with yourself that is the key On. then he will not be able to just poke into your mobile. okay physically also it should be secure and uh yes. then digitally yes. also it should be secure Correct. okay thank you sir uh, now next questions uh, shalaka madam please go ahead and ask the questions Ma'am, please, please unmute yourself first. Uh, Your mute. Not... Okay. Uh, sir, our government has come up with the Digi Locker app under the Digital India program. Okay. So, uh, it is expected we can store our documents on the app. So, is it safe to store our all important document like Aadhar card and driving license, etc., on the Digi Locker app? Yes, Digi Locker seems to be safe. Mm -hmm. but as far as if you can ask me seriously every 6 months you need to check the security of your application upgrade the application digi locker is definitely safe because the uh, method that they have used the two factor authentication in their encryption is also good 
in fact uh, all the state governments and authorities accept that i as it is a original document so i have stored all my documents on digi locker itself and i don't carry any physical document anymore so digi locker is safe in short Thank you, sir. My uh, second question is: uh, In the COVID-19 pandemic situation, okay, kids are exposed to the various app, okay, because they are going for online learning. So, what kind of care should be taken by parents that kids should not expose to such cyber security type of things? Okay, so it's a good question, and it's uh, really a challenging one because kids are sitting in front of those screens for two hours together and uh, being a kid he will definitely go here and there because i have seen even my son does the same thing so i would advise all the parents that uh, keep a watch and if possible try to install parental security in your antivirus software and install it so that all other softwares he cannot go he can only have restricted access to the softwares or the tools that he needs to use so that he will not be able to go here and there but it's better that a parent should always peep in what exactly his child is doing during the online the answer a question yes sir uh, but uh, one more doubt that uh, if i consider a 8 or 7 standard student okay then if we on the parental control then it will be very difficult for those student to such few things which required for their science activity <laughs> correct so i would advise that we should make all our children cyber aware tell them the hazards of cyber world and train them to learn or use this cyber world judiciously that's the advice sir one so more question said, yeah, yeah go ahead sir that uh, all of we are using smartphone but generally we don't have a antivirus on smartphone so what kind of security we have on with our smartphones okay so good question and uh, this is one neglected field even all the antivirus uh, companies also complain that users are not aware it is better looking at the exposure of the smartphone to all the devices in fact all the applications i would advise go for antivirus if not purchased one in fact majority of antivirus companies are giving mobile version free or at very less cost don't look at the cost but it's better that you use antivirus software on your mobile phone if not at least keep using applications like hakuna hakuna will tell you hakuna is a known authorized software uh, published by government of india so you can use hakuna to see whether your phone or the uh, uh, transaction that you are doing is a secure or not so use uh, tools like hakuna or best way is go for antivirus software on phone majority of the companies are giving it free for first 3 to 6 months but in coming days i don't see any other way than to have our smartphone protected because it's the only tool which is now getting exposed to everything so better to go for uh, antivirus it's not costly go and uh, or keep hygiene and keep looking at application every day every application and keep updating it it's going to be a very very tremendous task so instead of that better to go and uh, install an antivirus there are antivirus softwares available on your smartphone phone version also android and apps the only reason why android phones do not have is because the number the exposure of android phones is lesser than android, android phones therefore you don't have antivirus uh, or no requirement of antivirus on ios phones but still i would advise every operating system is vulnerable you need to have some secure uh, secureness in that thank you sir we have one question in chat box as you are working in the field of startup expert and having a lot of experience in the infosys as well as the different software companies so related with that uh, can you give a brief idea about the startup students 
Okay. So and I have a lot of experience in the infosy. Okay. So I was uh, in the even though I did not uh, start up a specific company, but I was always into startup mode and did many startups work. And even the current startup which we are working is into a very specific domain that is banking domain and payment domain where security is going to be at most important. So the advice to startup is first, what I would advise to this young generation is first, complete your education. Take professional experience in one or two in the field that you want, you have an idea or you want to start a startup. Once you have two to three years of experience in the industry, look at all the angles of industry, then you can venture into a startup. And I would advise that there are multiple government schemes where you can take help of government funding also is provided by them. And you can start a startup or you can do a startup with no investment by doing a consultancy work in a specific niche area. And I would I, I can see that there are many startups in India which are in the field of the cyber domain and whose CEOs are very, very young at the age of 24, 25. They call themselves as the CEOs and they have given talks in the TED Talks also, various TED Talks I heard where these uh, young uh, people from cyber security, cyber domain are claiming to be CEOs and they have started their own companies. So it's not a good age to start, do a startup is I would say it's young. I may be old, but I feel myself young. So I've, I'm in the startup game. And uh, I think we should, uh, they should start thinking it right from now. And always they should cherish their dream. First have a dream, take experience, go for startup. And don't do huge investments initially. Your investment should be your return profit and then you can uh, go up with that startup. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, we have observed that in last weeks, the, there is a business, Google stopped to work for a few hours, I think. So, uh, is that is unuseful? A lot of sites are there which are directly connected with the Google only, and uh, they depend on the Google for their database. So, is there, this is an opportunity for the youngsters? Uh, no, I didn't get the question. I, opportunity for youngsters for what? Working in Google or finding out the fault? Actually, the lot of site till now depends on the Google only for their database okay. and uh, all other things. So yeah. uh, I mean, say, other than the Google, we don't have a huge database software or the other things. That's why I'm asking this. Correct. So good question. People have tried to create themselves Google. Uh, there was a uh, effort in India also, I think there's, I don't remember the exact name, but Guru was the name of the site, uh, which are actually were doing a function of Google only. <coughs> there is a Google type of site, which is Maps of India, which actually does Google Maps. It is better than Google, but it's not famous. See, the scale at which Google has reached is very big. And uh, to reach that scale, I think if you ask me the opportunity is there or not, yes, it is always there. We never know some other Google may come, but it's very tough for Google has reached a stage where it is actually unbeatable and people are actually talking internet is nothing but Google only. So we talk in terms of Google. It's like uh, the function of Xerox, that name of the company itself is a Xerox. Today we call it as a Xerox for a copy. Actually it was a copy of a paper, but Xerox is a name which is simple. So it's like Google is nothing but a search engine. There were search engines earlier also, if you know the history of this, Alta Vista was the first uh, search engine which was doing Google function. So actually Google copied Alta Vista's, uh, Alta Vista, Amazon, today's Amazon actually was in the internet world in 1995, 96. Alta Vista was the first site which I remember, which was to do the Google functions, but Google overtook that. So similarly, we will never know some other company will take over Google also and do the job of Google. And uh, what you talked about, Google stopped working for some time or the other. Yes, it does happen because Google is not only in one country or anything. Their servers are replicated all over the world. Maybe one part of the world was not working. One part of the world was working. So all these things keep happening because of the glitches that come in the internet. Even in India, 
if you ask me we have to strengthen our network our internet bandwidth or internet network is still very poor even though 3g to 4g was a big leap i think i'm expecting and i'm waiting for this 5g to come which actually is going to change the entire world so if india adopts 5g very well i think we'll be better than what we are today in spite of our uh, limited internet internet bandwidth capacity we are actually thriving the world actually and we are doing run for money for all the developed countries which is a good thing thank you sir uh, for your nice answers so uh, may i have any question shalaka ma'am please or tej ma'am yes sir uh, there is one question from bhosle sir that yes. how much educational organization are at risk when using wifi of educational organization <laughs> uh, can, can you repeat the question again please uh, sir uh, at as a educational institute we go for the wifi okay so using the wifi so how much educational organization at risk when using wifi of wifi for the educational purpose so, so because in use, yeah got it sir actually got, yeah go ahead sir even we are we have also our some data which is in the account section with confidential data and if we are on the wifi network then is it risk for the institute always whenever any data is on the wifi it is a risk but your wifi you should check at the wifi type of wifi whether it's a secured wifi or not if it's a secured wifi and it's a password protected i don't think there is any problem because most of the organizations use secured wifi and their protocol is the latest protocol wep is the old protocol now you have to upgrade your protocol check the credentials of your wifi and what kind of wifi it is if it is not upgrade the wifi and use the secured wifi then it is not a threat if it is not then it's definitely a threat because most majority of threats happen because of the ignorance and unawareness of people what exactly we are doing and how the data could be fished out by these hackers so my advice is check your wifi get your wifi verified by a professional and see if it's a secured wifi and the latest protocol you is used for securing that particular wifi then it's fine okay thank you thank you sir and uh, we don't have any much more questions now i would like to ask munar uh, please give the vote of thanks for the today's talk um yes sir i'm runal ingre thank you chandrashekar sir for sparing your precious time and delivering such a interesting session for us um you have made us all aware about the cyber world and what actually happens when we use any digital device um your thoughts views and opinions have enlightened us and it will surely help us in future events thank you to the organizing staff science association staff and to have am i audible you are audible go ahead yes you are audible mona hello Rosal. are you listening to us Yes, no, I think what should we say? Should we try? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Thank you, everyone, to conduct this session, and thank you, students, friends, everyone, to join this session and make this event a huge success. Thank you so much, sir, to have enlightened us in such an interesting session. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It was my attempt to talk to young generation, and I always like this, so I'll be more than happy to share. and uh, answer any questions if they have they can reach out to me on my email maybe the department can can uh, collate the questions and send it to me i'll answer each and every question thank you very much and i'm honored to talk in this particular session and uh, thank you once again to science association and hp college for giving me this opportunity to share my views and thoughts thank you thank you sir thank you once again thanks to you as well as thank you to the bosley sir the senior professor computer science department and all the faculties associated with the program
so uh, uh, here uh, i conclude that today's session is over and please join for the next session on tomorrow at the same time thank you thank you